So today on The Beats with Kelly Kennedy, I am so eager to share Ian Kennedy, who is now my husband, but the first practitioner that ever brought me into this world of the energy and the frequency of the bodies and how the body actually heals. This is, for me, it is my favorite and I am biased, but why wouldn't it be? He is my husband, the man that I've chosen to connect my soul to for the rest of my life. And the purpose of this podcast is for me to help you understand how to get in touch with that inner soul, that inner being that gets to expand and gets to feel the joy and the compassion and all the glory of this world that has that we have to offer. And Ian is the person that brought me there. And I'm so excited for you to be a part of this today and share this. He is absolutely stick to the end. It's incredible that you get to hear his story. You get to understand um, so many things about the energy fields of the body and how it all matches together. Enjoy this podcast today, y'all, and we'll see you on the next beat. Welcome back to the Beats with Kelly Kennedy, and I am sharing the screen today with one of my, this is for me, the point of this podcast is to really introduce <laughs> the concepts, no pressure, to, to introduce the concepts of how the body works. And my journey started 23 years ago, as so many of you know, with this man introducing me these concepts. I'm gifted and blessed to call him now my husband, but this journey did not start with him as my husband. And I'm very excited to introduce to the world Ian Kennedy and the concepts of energy and really what that meant. So just quickly, I want to say that Ian and I are not doctors. Ian has, you can see by his face, okay. um, he has been trained in the medical field as a combat ranger medic. He was in the martial arts for many years. He got into the energetic healing arts 30 some years ago at this point. I met him a less than 10 years into that journey in my own healing journey. And the reason that I brought him, and I'm going to let him speak in just a minute, but the reason that I wanted him to speak and the reason I wanted to bring him on the podcast, because I wanted folks to begin to understand how their body works. And then almost in hindsight, look back at the story and really understand how that unfolded. And when I met him, for those that don't know the story quickly, um, I was in body pain. I had been in a motor vehicle accident three years prior to meeting him, and I had lived on, <clears throat> excuse me, painkillers and muscle relaxers for those years. And I was studying medicine, a pre-med at Cornell University. My father had, uh, the first year at school, had a, suffered a stroke, a second stroke, and then died within five months of that second stroke after having lived in the hospital. And I was really dismayed by the Western medicine model of medicine because I felt it was very suppressive in nature and very much cut it out, radiate it, medicate it, and get out of my office and stop complaining because I don't wanna hear it anymore. And I was not satisfied with that because I was physically living in pain, living on Vicodin and Flexerol, trying to manage my pain, very depressed, very angry. And then my fa father died amongst all that. So now that contributed to all of it. So I got out of college, I started working with this company that had some Chinese herbs that was giving me a little bit of results and I ended up in Ayn's office. Mm -hmm. And we ended up that first meeting was not anything about health, it was about sales and he was doing this emotional release technique that was very successful for me. So I came back to his office and the first thing I said was, oh, so he goes, so what are we gonna work on today? And I go, well, we're gonna work on pain. He goes, okay. And do you remember the first thing you did? No. You put your hand on my shoulder and you started to touch my back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you go, where's the pain? Mm -hmm. And I started to cry. <laughs> and he goes, I'm sorry, did I hurt you? I said, no. It's just nobody physically has touched me before. All the doctors, all the orthopedic specialists, pain specialists, neurologists, chiropractors, acupuncturists that I've been to, they didn't do this. And when he did that, I felt relief. And so at the end of that day, we, I cried. It was a 15 minute appointment. I cried a lot. I was a little pissed at him to be honest with you because I didn't understand why we were talking about my dad when I was really dealing with pain. Right. I came back to your office a week or two weeks later and I started to really wean myself off of Vicodin and Flexerol for the first time in three years. And I go, how did you do that? 
Do you remember what your response was? No. <laughs> <laughs> he said, energy. And I go, what the hell does that mean? So I am 23 years later, please explain to our audience a little bit about your background and then what does that mean energy? So we'll do the energy. So it would have been more appropriate probably when I look back on it, uh, if I had said uh, information, cool, huh? Mm. Because that's really what it was. Mm. Um, and so, you know, it's been a long journey for me in regards to uh, healthcare in many different ways. And um, I've come to the point where seeing the body, seeing a person, not a body, but seeing a person in a very different way. And that was really the beginning of that. You know, when I said energy, uh, that was kind of like saying to somebody, oh, you're out of balance. Mm. It was a good thing to make you think about. It was something I could throw up there, uh, but I didn't understand what it really meant until many years later. And so balance, you know, is really parasympathetic, sympathetic, the regulation of a person, how the physical body deals with uh, stress and the ability to burn energy and all of that. And most people are aware of regulation, really important aspect of the physical body. So when I said energy to that young woman back then. <laughs> that young woman. <laughs> that young woman. When I said energy, She's really what, what I was trying to convey, I think, was more the idea of information. Mm -hmm. And so today I look at a person really in four aspects of what manifests a, a person. And that's the physical body, uh, the mental body. And when we talk about the mental body or the mind, right, we're talking about um, memory, imagination, the ability for discernment, make decisions, um, intellect, logical thinking, that's all the mind, right? And then uh, there's the emotional body. And really in your story, you touched on all of this and why people get sick. And that's really what I wanna talk about is why do people get sick? Um, and so there's the emotional aspect of a person. And then there's the energetic or the etherical part of the body. And that's that energy that actually conducts the information that makes up the whole person, okay? So if we have an opportunity to work in any of those spots, you know, working on all of them is really important. For instance, in your story, you broke your physical body on some level. You mm -hmm. had a physical injury, right? right? So let me ask you a question. You have this physical injury, you break the body on some level. Did it affect your mental state? Oh, yeah. Right? Did it affect your mind? angry. Okay, so you, yeah. that's, that's the emotional jump. Okay, okay so, it so, so I got, did it affect your ability for critical thinking? Did it affect your ability for who I am? What's going on in my life? Well, Did it, it affect changed. your mind? Did it change that? Yeah, right? because okay. it made me think about the body differently. Okay. And then my dad had the strokes right after that. So that's some emotional stress. Yeah. So now the emotional body's getting affected, right? Mm -hmm. So this is all being generated though through the energetics of the information that's running through your system. Mm -hmm. So when you finally ended up with somebody uh, working on you in a different way, um, you know, you were taking herbs for the physical body, trying mm -hmm. to help with the pain and get away from the medication. Mm -hmm. So you're working on the physical body. Then we started to really do some emotional work so that the emotional aspects of all of those stressors could be released a little bit from the body. So that changed the information as well, but it's all running through this energetic or etherical body, right? Given the information to the system. Mm -hmm. And once that's all released, then what's interesting and wonderful is that the physical body has to start to manifest that. It has no choice. So, you know, once your thoughts started to change, you're going, oh, there's other ways your thoughts change, then your emotions change because how we think is how we feel, mm -hmm. right? We can prove that all day long. How we think is how we generally feel. So once all of those things started to shift and you started to go, oh, I'm feeling different. I'm thinking different. My body's starting to feel different. You're, let me ask you a question. Did your energy shift in relationship oh. to after the accident? I mean, you were young, right? You were yeah. a teenager. I was right? 23. 23. I was 20 when the car accident. 20 with the car accident. when we met. Okay, so 20 with the car accident. So she breaks her physical body. It affects her mental state, affects the ability to go to school. She gets a lot of emotional stress in regards to not just the physical body, but what's happening with that. Yeah. And then did your energy tank? I did. <laughs> and then her energy tank. Yeah. So the point is, is that if those things do that to each other, if they're all in conjunction with each other, if they're all working together with each other, right? It's also, so, it's also true that if any one of those are affected, let's pretend that there's high emotional stress for somebody, but they don't break the body. Um, maybe there's high emotional stress. Maybe there's uh, mental 
uh, stress as well, right? Uh, I'm in school and I'm, I'm stressed over school and I've got stuff going on at home, going on at home. The physical body will then start to manifest symptoms of that. So it works in reverse as well. So any one of those things that you can start to work on with somebody, and generally 99% uh, of healthcare experiences out there work on the physical body. Doesn't matter whether it's allopathic or quote unquote alternative. Let me give you some herbs. Let me give you some medications. I wanna, I wanna mess with the physical body. Let me do a good chiropractic adjustment, do things to the physical body. Mm -hmm. And those things absolutely start to affect the other three aspects, right? So just to reiterate, cause you have said so many things here and I know for me it's become a common language because okay. we've been working at it for 23 years and yet let's back up for those so let's clarify so there's four emotional bodies no there's there's four bodies or four dimensions of a person there's four a dimensions of the body physical physical birth a physical body right. which you've accumulated right right you weren't born the adult. skeleton with the muscles all the and the fascia and, stuff, and all that length. time and food Time and food make Time that happen. Time and food. What you eat is what you become. Okay. And so physical body. Physical body. Okay. Because it keeps changing as well. Right? right. Okay. And then you have the mental mind, body. the mental body, the mammalian brain. Yep. Right? The, th yeah. the thought life and yep. the things we think. And a lot of people think that that's what they are, but it's just your thoughts. It's another accumulation. Right. All the things that I've ever been taught. Or ever, read. Ever or read. Or, you know, everything has been downloaded into input, my system. Any input. Yep. That came from the outside world, right? Right. Same thing with your physical body. Right. Any okay. input from the outside. Yep. Physical and mental. Then you have the emotional body. All the things that I perceive have happened to me through my five senses. So wait, he says this so fast because it's such his language. All the things we have perceived from all of our five senses creates our emotional body. Absolutely. So take that into digestion for a moment, folks, that are listening to this. Okay. There's three... So far, we've talked about three of the four, yeah. and the fourth, which is the one that you and I worked with when we met, was the emotional body, right. and we've talked about how 90% of all illness is emotional, because it's what we perceive mm -hmm. and take all those input from all of our senses, our sight, our smell, our touch, sound. our sound, taste. our taste. Yeah. All tuned to the outside world. Okay. Right? And you that, can't close your eyes and look at your liver, so, right? right? So they're all tuned to the outside world. That starts to create an experience for me. Okay. That experience starts to feel emotional. If I, and I'll tag that with my mind because the way I think is the way I feel. Well, what makes me think certain things? My experiences of the outside world. So we've got those three, right? Yeah. Okay, so they're manifesting who I am. And then the last one mm -hmm. is the energetic or the etherical body, what people call the etherical body. And that's really the, the electricity that jumps from from inside your brain, from synapse to synapse, that goes, oh, this is information. That's the ionic exchanges. Right. It's not in the tissue. Right. It's in the electricity. It's on the outside of the cell and the receptors. Okay. That's Scientifically, a, that's, see, this is what I have. For me, <laughs> it's just the idea that it's the energy just like lighting a light bulb up. Okay, right. so a certain amount of energy is making that happen. So there's a certain amount of energy that has information. And that's in electrical it. in the body, yeah. and it's created by minerals. Right. So when we play in a place with you those years ago, you know, what we really did is we helped shift your mind and it helped shift your emotions, which changed the way you thought, which changed the way you felt. And it was easier for your body to go back into a state of ease and let go of the pain. And I think it was a process that allowed that to happen. Today, I'm excited about the fact that there's technologies and ways to deal with all four of them. Because if you can deal with all four of them, it's pretty exciting. I like dealing with the energetic body because it is that informational highway. And so and this is like the concept of epigenetics where there's information that's beyond our DNA that absolutely. we bring in with our energetic body. That's our tendencies or right. so forth, if you will, right. that allows our body to now attract those emotions, those physics, the physical stuff as well. Correct. Sure. Sure. And so, the, so it starts rolling on each other. It starts rolling on yeah. itself and you start to manifest the me, the who I am. Okay. The cool thing is that when you and I were doing that, there wasn't actually a technology. There was a technique, right? There wasn't really a technology to allow a person to go through an experience and allow the energetics to shift, allow the emotional aspect to shift, and really allow the mental aspect to shift as there is today. And that's really, you know, for me, sound of soul. Mm. Sound of soul does that for, for yeah. folks. And the only requirement, see, there was a different requirement on some level when, when, when I worked with you back then. Uh, and, and, and 
the same requirement as well. The person has to have a willingness. Mm -hmm. If there is not a willingness, then you're better off eating herbs, taking medications, uh, and forcing the physical body to get into a certain place. And that may or may not shift the mind and the emotions and the energy. Um, but, but it might keep them stuck in that place rather than degrading farther. Yeah, absolutely. So a suppressive medication absolutely. for somebody that's willing to take a suppressive medication, that might be the best thing for them because sure. that's all they're willing to do. Right. And that'll stop the progress right. of their distance. Whatever, right, exactly. Versus so the body, me, I was like, get me off these medications. Yeah, sure. I had no willingness to take those, really. Right, right. Let's... And so there's, there has to be a willingness to either sit on the table and play that game or... The beautiful thing about Sound of the Soul is if you're willing to relax <laughs> and be present, I think they're the two things that have to happen. You know, if you're willing to allow it to happen and be present, then I think what you experience through doing some of that emotional release work and, and, and other things um, really starts to happen for somebody because they're being affected through sound, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a wonderful energy, right? Everything is actual sound. Everything, right? Everything's vibe, manifesting. Everything's a frequency. And so if there's a frequency and a vibration, there has to be a sound, even though we can't hear it all. Right. It goodness, might be, you don't want to hear it all. It might be a pitch that we can't Up or hear. or down. Right. But it's still, and science has proven that today, that everything's a vibration. And if something vibrates, it has a sound to it. And just real quick for those that are listening, ha ha ha, listening to the sound. You know, I and I, um, at one point, I forget how many years ago this was, but we were we were watching something on like Discovery Channel or something. Remember about that tones and the sounds? And we're about 15, 16 years oh, yeah. apart mm -hmm, in age. Mm -hmm. And Absolute they were playing sense. I could tones not hear. On, this, on this documentary proving yep. that as you age, there are certain tones that you no longer can yeah. hear. And when you're younger, you can hear all of Our them. Our son was doing that. He right. raised his hand to everyone. And there were some where I was just like, I cannot hear that. And I yeah. was like, come on, you can nope. hear that. Couldn't hear and it. I I was like, okay, now I don't hear that one. And Sauce was like, oh, I can hear that one. Yeah. So, you know, I know it's a little trajectory, but I, I think it's, it's okay. important for people to understand that every, you cannot escape vibration. Everything right. vibrates, whether right. we're aware of it or not. Right. And everybody's working in all three of these fields, whether all they're aware, yeah. all four, I'm sorry, yeah. whether they're aware of it or not, correct? And that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. Because the less aware of it that I am, the more I feel like it affects me in a way that I'm not in control, quote unquote, okay? Um, so the more, so, the less I'm aware of it, the more that outside influence, that outside input affects me and I feel out well, of control. Yeah, I would agree I with that, a hundred percent. One of the things that you have enlightened me in this way is that when I met you, prior to meeting you, I had wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to not feel out of control. And what I felt out of control was, is am I gonna get cancer? How do I not get it? And if I get it, how do I not die from it? Because I watched my father at 55 years old die after having cancer seven times, a couple strokes and many other mental mm -hmm. conditions mm -hmm. going, I don't want those genetics. I don't want that. How do I not get that? Then we started working after my car accident. We start working together. We start unwinding that. And here I now feel 23 years later, more in control of my health of my physical body, have more flexibility in my yeah. mind, in my con in my emotional yeah. state, can Good I tolerate energy. more? Yeah. When I met you, I couldn't Good deal energy. with cats, I couldn't right, deal right. with hay, I couldn't deal with dust, I couldn't deal with anybody using the word dad, I couldn't deal right, with sure. tall men, I couldn't deal with SUVs, I couldn't deal, there was a lot of things I was rigid and unable to moderate and deal with. And now I have all this flexibility. And that was control. because of the stacking of the information right? This started to manifest what we felt like or what any of us feel like is our lives. And, you know, that's, it's actually not the case. It's just information. It depends on how we deal with that information. And the cool thing is, is that to realize, you know, for human beings, the biggest obstacle is the fact that we so deeply identify with the physical body. And we, and when I say the physical body, that includes the mind and the emotions and everything else, you know? And so the deeper we associate with that, um, the more down a rabbit hole you can end up going, right? And chasing your tail. So I guess the bottom line is that, yeah, I think 10% of illnesses for people and diseases actually totally come from uh, external experiences. They break the body or there's some kind of external stressor. And I think in about 90% of illnesses manifest in some way around these four aspects of a person. Um, if there's some kind of deep traumatic experience, whether that's on a physical level, emotional level, a mental level, or a combination, usually a combination of all those right. things. 
you know, and then the body has to follow that information. And that's the key to realize the body's going to follow whatever information is presented. Um, the more aware we become, the more discerning we can become and, and, and be able to go, well, this is information I want, and this is not necessarily information that I want. And this is information I can take in. Uh, you know, we don't want to build walls. We want to be a filter. So I want to filter life as it happens, right? And take the things on uh, that are supportive to how I function and, not, and, and let the filter catch everything else. So again, I think, you know, uh, the technology of Sound of Soul and allowing someone to do that without a lot of effort other than the willingness uh, to lay there and experience the sound and the light. Of them. Of who they are. So for those and that having that really, you know, reverberate inside in a very different way where you can't really do that in any other, you know, in any other way. Uh, to be reintroduced to yourself in that way and, um, and, and disappear for a period of time in that is extremely healthy, I think. So I, I, I want to back up even farther and we want, I want to get back to Sound of Soul because I think there's a point of which that you have just brought up that I don't think we've ever made clear on this podcast um, about re, refining yourself. What was the wording you just used? To go inside, what it, you just said it. Reintroduce yourself. Reintroduce yourself. Thank you. To yourself. Yeah. So, you know, I am Kennedy, non-licensed practitioner that loves people. How did this start for you? How did you get involved in this? Tell us a little bit about your background. Like, you have a unique perspective. He's laughing. He's like, "Are you kidding me?" I know that's what a so, thought is, but you know, you grew up in a house that so wasn't my, common. Yeah, so, no. Let's so, talk about that background. All right. So. I was cultivated in a very different way uh, because of my father's life experience. We were, we were really allowed to be cultivated as opposed to being raised. We weren't really herded into a certain mindset in any way. So there was a lot of freedom in, in that way. And, um, you know, I was exposed to a, an interesting uh, array of monkeys throughout that early part of my life, you know, from, from zero to about 20, five years old. Um, and so that- So there's people listening right now going, what is he talking about? Is this Tarzan that she's interviewing? What do you mean you were exposed so my to father monkeys? And my great, so my father and my great aunt rescued monkeys for a period of years and we ended up with 21 monkeys over about 20 years where they were living in the house. The house was rearranged so that it was incredibly functional. Um, and there were a few monkeys that were living free in the house, but most of them were in cages. And these were rescued monkeys, yeah. right? From all over the world. So you had wild animals living in your in the home yep. on the property of which yep. you grew up on. Yeah. Yep. And your father was an electrician by trade. Yeah. And he was raised. Uh, he got cultivated though, because when sure. he was young, he spent some so, time. Yeah. At twelve years old, he left his home in New Jersey, went to Florida, and ended up. Uh, living with the Seminole Indians until he was about 17 and a half years old. And that's when he joined the Navy and went to war and, and went to the Second World War. So um, I didn't see allopathic medicine people uh, really through my childhood. Um, he had medicine, Indian medicine that he used on us. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a lot of connection with nature. There was nothing that was really deemed good or bad. It was an interesting, you know. Read a lot of books. There was libraries and libraries. Yeah, he had a huge you, library. It was very important to him. And you were encouraged to, to read and expand your mind yeah. and learn different things. And there was yeah. no one way you were. But, but tell us a little bit so, about that monkey experience and what that taught you about the system. Well, I think more than anything, the first thing it taught me was how to stay very relaxed and very calm no matter what's going on in the outside world because monkeys um, are loud, they're scary, they can be scary, um, they are not a uh, domesticated animal. I was never bit by a monkey. Uh, my father was, my aunt was, but I was never bit by a monkey. Um, and I think more than anything, it taught me how to stay relaxed no matter what was going on. And those animals will feel that in a chemical way. Uh, animals absolutely, people know that, right? Dogs feel people. If the dog doesn't like you, I don't want you in the house. This is back to that thing, energy right? we're talking about. So, so it's, there's, there's absolutely a, a vibration that is set up. That sets up a chemical reaction in your in body, body absolutely. that animals are picking up all the time. So sure. you learned about the energy of the body literally from the get-go. Yeah. Then you started then, studying martial then arts. Then really the martial arts for me is what, yeah. But since you were 12. On, on that. Yeah. yeah, since I was about 14. Okay, 14. So about 14 years old, I got introduced to the martial arts and, and uh, stayed on that path 
for a very long time. And then at 27, you went into the army became and became combat medic. And then again, very good under pressure. Yeah, the same parasympathetic. Ranger medics. Same like, parasympathetic. Very good, knowing how to and stay then, parasympathetic. And Maybe. then uh, started the martial arts again, and then was introduced uh, to really Chinese medicine through acupuncture. Yeah. And spent uh, a good period of time. You had a person in, that in your practice. life at that point yeah. that said, hey, instead of breaking down the body with that energy, can, how about you, you can, can build it up? You right? can build you can it up. Health books, right? Um, so, yeah, it was all of that. And you know, I think the only thing that shows is that there's always a progression, right? There's nothing ever stagnant. Our, our physical body, our mental body, our emotional body, none of it's stagnant. I mean, the things that we thought were rock solid um, a year ago or two years ago, right, in regards to uh, knowledge or information, today we go, oh, no, that's not true anymore. It's this. Right. So, you know, that, that shows up for everybody. So I think what's important is to realize that there's nothing stagnant. There's always a progression. You're going to move in a certain way. And the more aware we are of that, uh, the better off we are. And I think Sound of Soul makes people more aware of not just where they're at, but what the possibilities are uh, for them, you know? Because they get to reacquaint themselves with themselves. And in so a different way, yeah. go back to my journey a little bit, if you will. So I met Ian and when I was 23 and we started working together, then he, I would say he met me at 25. That's the ongoing right, joke. I was right. his client for a couple of years and, uh, you know, and then we started to become friends and he was like, I'm sorry, do I know you? It was still a joke for me. I still laugh mm -hmm, at it. Mm -hmm. So, but through that process, when I really started working with you in an office setting, like working for yeah, you, not yeah. with you as a practitioner yeah. and a client, but as a, as a, as a employee of you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you and your partner at the time were like, wow, she's just really loud and obnoxious and really like, she needs to go be, she needs to go to the monastery and learn how to be. And so you guys sent me on a journey, um, which I thought was vacation uh, to go be, because you kept telling me this, go in the other room and be. And it was like, again, that like, what does that mean? The energy, I don't understand what that means. Go be in a room. What do you want me to do when I'm there? You want me to do a yoga? You want me to meditate? Yeah, I want you to be. Well, what, what mantra you want me to say? Nothing. I want you to be, mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't understand it. And it was not until 21 years after that lesson tried to be taught that with sound of soul, like I've meditated, I've done all the journey and I've done journaling. I've, I, I was meditating two hours a day at the time when I got involved with, when I experienced sound of soul. And I remember I was in Germany. I was not with you at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But I remember calling you and saying, I finally understand what you've been trying to teach me all these years. I finally was able to be with myself. And I never in my life, when I did sound the soul that first time, had never yet felt that. And now I feel it all the time. That deep level of compassion and joy and excitement and enthusiasm that I feel now when I do sound of soul, when I meditate, when I'm in a room by myself, when I'm walking down the street, okay. because I live in a more being meditative state, more balanced. And I would say that for those of you are watching versus listening, I am, is a very even keeled Zen person in many ways. Like, of course, I've known him for a long time and I've seen uh, ebbs and flows. Our son was born, we were married and, you know, different things have happened. Like there's definitely some ups and some downs to that. Sure. And yet the majority of it, you know, the house can be burning down and I'm like, it's okay. We're just going to walk out. And I'm like, the house is burning down. We got to walk out. Now I feel that we're more in simpatico of our energy fields, more in alignment mm -hmm. of going, okay, Corona's happening. Um, you want to go take some time off and spend some time with Silas and let's redirect and no big deal. And we're just going to keep moving forward in life. And as long as we're here and we're in a peaceful state, it doesn't matter what's going on around us. Mm -hmm. And that's been such a gift that you tried to give me, but then you became my friend and my yeah, sure. husband and I couldn't mm -hmm. learn that lesson from you. And it was sound of soul that gave us, that gave me that right. gift to experience that because what it does is it takes your own heart rate, variability, your own measurable heart rate frequencies mm -hmm. and converts that frequency tone into music and into light into other forms of frequency right at that same level at that same measurement of frequency converts it back and when that is played back for you you're completely resonant and you're able to be and as you said able to find yourself in another place right and, yeah and, and you know while you were uh, talking about that, I, I really thought that, you know what, Sound of Soul, 
ultimately does is it lets people connect with life in the broadest sense because it is that heartbeat. And there's a difference between life and lives. Like this is my body, that's your body. That's physical truth. This mm. is true. Mm -hmm. But there is life, mm. right? And as long as I see it as life. There's life between us for those that were listening. He was looking. Yeah, at there's life in general. Every tree, every blade of grass, every worm, there's life, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're a part of, we're a, we're a manifestation of life. life. What Sound of Soul does is it lets you experience that life, that grand life that's already inside you that you're unaware of. Mm -hmm. Because the minute we take L-I-F-E and break it into L-I-V-E, mm -hmm. I've separated it. And now it's easy, if I go life and life, or if I go live and life, life, L-I-V-E. Live. Live. If I do live and live, you live life. Once I separate life into live, right, or lives, then it's easy to shoot an animal for sport. It's these immediate separation so, can happen. Oh, I see what you're saying. So instead of looking at that deer and going, wow, look at that form it's a of life. life. And I'm that form of life too. Right. And we're the same. Oh, wait. No, I have a life. I, and that has a life. Then I can take it. So, so, you know, all life matters. Not all lives matter. Mm. All life matters. And if we go, all life matters, then there's no prejudice. There can be none because I see it all as the same. And that's what really Sound of Soul does. It, it lets a person get in touch with the fact that they are life. In connection. And not a life, alive. Alive. Not, not um, living. Not, yeah, not a separate thing from what the big life is. And when that happens, then tears come to people's eyes and they feel different when they get up. And, they and the physical feel body has to manifest that. You know, you're si you said, oh, you know, I feel more joyful and energetic and da, 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 and all those things that life really is. And it's just, unfortunately, in many ways, our emotions and our mind that start to separate us out from those things. And then the physical body is affected. And so over a period of time, if I'm constantly running negative thoughts, if I'm constantly in a place of not feeling life mm -hmm. and seeing myself as a separate life, and feeling connected, part of that yeah, absolutely. life is feeling connected to all to of it. To all of it. To all yeah, of it. Because if you are connected in that way, then it's not easy to cut a tree down. It's not easy to shoot an animal. It's not easy to be prejudiced against another human being. It's not easy being. to hate somebody. It's not easy. It doesn't matter because it's all life, right? So Right. I Whether it's the soul. snake that used to scare me that doesn't scare me right. anymore. Right. Or it's the, you know, I mean, I had a fear of snakes sure, when sure, we sure. met. Sure. And snakes have keep showing up for me. That was this all downloaded information. That's right. right? All downloaded and information. And now I look at snakes very differently and right. look at their life and what they're representing and it's very different. So I think Sound of Soul has an amazing potential for people, um, you know, beyond just, oh, this is really cool and it made me feel a certain way. I really think it does help people reconnect, not just with themselves, but with themselves to the point of realizing, oh, I am a life, you know? I am part of this. Of this whole connection connection yeah and we connect and then we sure. go back to okay how do we save humanity because we could all say that humanity in this world's on a trajectory that's not you know necessarily the greatest i think there's a huge tipping point happening mm -hmm. and i would correct me if i'm wrong because i'm sure yeah. you will um but and the connection that we all feel to each other that everybody through this coronavirus pandemic has mm -hmm. felt that we are connected there's no way to separate us you know whether you're in well sure the coronavirus yeah. has affected every person because it's we are all connected no matter how much they've tried to separate us and sure, sure, sure. you know keep us in our homes and keep the six feet distance and everything you cannot separate the human gene the human organism for the rest of life because mm -hmm. it is all one well yeah you know <laughs> it's life coronavirus it's life. is alive it's alive it's just trying to live it's just trying to live it's not trying to kill you it's just trying to live it's trying to express. It's, it's, it's expanding. Right. And that's all life ever wants to do is expand. That's all human being actually ever wants to do is continue, continue to expand. And the minute we feel like we can't expand, then all kinds of stuff shows up in a negative way for the, for the mind, the energies, the body, and the emotions. So. Well, I'm not going to cry. Okay, good. <laughs> but I'm going to say that you've helped me expand in ways that I never 
thought possible when we met all those 23 years ago. And I know that for those of you listening and some of you that are watching, he has brought up more questions for you than he has answered yeah, probably today good. because that's his favorite thing that's to good. do. And I know he is not a fan when I say this, but his name is Ian, not Ian, even though it's spelled I-A-N. I swear it's because he's Weird. a little charged particle that he's trying <laughs> to expand all of us to get us, get our DNA to expand, to get us to find that inner peace so that we can be in a room and be whether monkeys are chasing us or the, the house is burning down and find that inner peace to stay connected with the greater sense of life. And that's an incredible gift that I know you've given myself. You've given so many others. And I know that this podcast in particular is going to be widely shared because we've been waiting to introduce the world to Ian Kennedy <laughs> and, and the thoughts and processes that you've encouraged so many others to expand and grow that the list is broad. And I want to thank you for all of them. And thank you for me. And thank you for joining us today. And that's is there my pleasure. any other words you'd like to leave our listeners of the beats with Kelly Kennedy from our heart to theirs. Um, you know, you've, you've opened up so many people's hearts and you've had traumas in your life and you've had all sorts of things happen yeah. to you. And yet you That's remain right. open and change. And I've watched you continue to change and grow throughout these years. And, and what's the key to that for you? Like, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but what's the key? <laughs> I think the key is uh, to allow life to happen, not to fight it, to realize that if you really are, if you really can be in touch uh, with your life, if you can direct your physical body, your mental body, your emotional body, and your energies in a direction that you want to go, and you can maintain it long enough, then you can manifest anything you want. The issue is for most of us, we can't maintain it long enough. We change in our minds constantly. Uh, we're changing our emotions constantly and how we feel. But if we can align those things in a direction that we go, this is what I want my life to be, you know, joyous, energetic, uh, you know, all of those things. Uh, and I want to I go into the world and wherever I go, I'm going to manifest uh, happiness and joy for, for people. And that's what, that's what I'm going to do. If we can hold those four bodies in a particular direction, you can manifest anything you want. And I think that's the key. And I think over a long period of time, over 60 years, it's taken me to get to the point where I finally have uh, experienced and understood that in a certain way of understanding that there are those four aspects. And if you really can hold them in a certain position uh, with a certain intention over a certain period of time, then any, anything is possible. And that's a beautiful way to end it. Anything is possible from our heart to yours. We'll see you next time on the Beats with Kelly Kennedy. Thank you so much. And My we can pleasure. be assured we will have Ian back. So let us know what subject you would like him to expand upon for you. We'll talk to you soon.